<coughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 4th, 2015 Town Council meeting. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And could we have the roll call by the town clerk? Chairman Ray? Here. Councillor Grennan? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor McCausland? Here. Councillor Sullivan? Here. Councillor <laughs> Wagner? Present. And Councillor Walsh? I'm going to say present just to change it up. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. <laughs> Okay, then we will move on to um, town council reports and correspondence. Um, is any Molly? I just have a quick update. We have a notice on the town website, citizen engagement, the town seeking applicants for the 2016 appointments to standing boards and commissions. Um, we are accepting applications from residents interested in serving on boards and commissions. We'll be interviewing in the next couple of weeks. And the deadline for submitting applications is Friday of this week. We hope to hear from a lot of people still. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Anyone else? No? Caitlin, can I call on you? You can. Um, this being some of the counselors' last meetings, mm -hmm. I have a few words for Mr. Jamie Wagner. I first met Jamie, actually, when he ran against me for my first um, year being elected. And though I won the seat, I was very pleased to have him run again and join me on the council. It has been a pleasure working with you over the last three years and wish that you were not such a good dedicated father, local business owner, or asylum attorney so that you'd have more time to stay on the council. Your presence will be greatly missed. Your insight in drafting and reviewing ordinances will be hard to replace. I am not sure that we would ever have made it through the Firing Range Committee without your focus and attention to the task at hand through the many months of meetings that we had. Jamie, I am very sad to see you go, but am 100% understanding in your decision. This is a thankless time commitment, so let me be sure to say, so you at least heard it once, thank you for choosing to serve this great community and leave knowing that you did make a difference. Thank you. And I just want to point out that I wrote this, typed it. My five years on the council, I have never prepared so much oh, just for you. <laughs> and Jamie, we have a gift for you. Parting gifts, right? Um, so oh, that's 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 okay. Nice job. Jessica, do you have something to say? I do. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Ray. And with, with the council's indulgence, I might, I might speak a little longer as Jim has served two terms, and so uh, I've got some things to say. So with that, I'll proceed. Jim and I joined the town council together. We were elected for the first time in 2009 and again in 2012. We didn't know each other at all, and we rarely interacted during our first year and a half on the council. But that began to change, and ultimately we all started to see and appreciate the many talents and diverse interests and disciplines that Jim brings to everything he does. A little performance history on the council, if you will. He served on the Ordinance Committee for two years and was chairman for one of those. He has represented the town at the Greater Portland Council of Governments. He served on the Appointments Committee and the Firing Range Committee. He's been the Fort Williams Advisory Commission's liaison for, I think, the last six years, or mm, almost. I'm not going to take that one to the bank. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> and uh, he was town council chairman in 2013 and finance chair in 2014 and 2015. Before his service on the council, Jim was on the Zoning Board of Appeals for six years and also served on the superintendent search committee. So I was thinking, well, what will Jim's legacy be? And then the question became, what will his legacies be? <laughs> because it's quite a list. His first goal and overriding legacy was communication. Improving communication has permeated everything he's been involved with. 
And I remember specifically the very first thing he said, because we were brand new counselors starting in January or December 2010, you know, having our caucus. <clears throat> and and uh, Jim just said, we have got to do a better job in this town of communicating with citizens. I remember, I've never forgotten that. And as a result, changes started to happen in 2010, such as public comment opportunities at every single meeting. And improvements have continued since then to include the recent roundtable and things like the tax bill survey that went out and got over 800 responses. Jim's communication strategy was formally recognized by the Maine Municipal Association, and the town received a plaque for that. Short-term rentals, Jim tackled this as an issue, and as chairman of ordinance, he facilitated completion of that, and that's been a success in addressing concerns of neighbors and the safety of tenants in short-term rentals, and that has been looked at by other communities facing similar issues. We significantly updated the town manager's annual review, bringing it up to date and in line with executives of similar caliber. In the library, after the failed referendum of 2012, Jim, as a town council chairman in 2013, initiated the library planning committee and its charge, which led to council adoption of a new plan and ultimately a successful referendum in 2014. <clears throat> Jim's background as a teacher, school principal, and later businessman gave him insight into school budget structure. And as finance chair in 2014, I'm sure we all remember this, Jim worked extensively with the school board chairman and school board finance chairman at the time to streamline successful presentations to the town council. He was also instrumental in guiding the school board in the creation of its first ever, I think, and certainly in many years, capital improvement plan, which was fantastic. With Jim's guidance, we developed revenue streams at Fort Williams Park. We had uh, food vendors, and we were charging tour buses to help with those expenses. And as you know, Jim has asked us to continue exploring ways to ge uh, generate revenues at Fort Williams Park, which is anything but free for Cape Elizabeth taxpayers. When Jim became town, town council chairman in 2013, he took charge of an issue that had been smoldering, though largely ignored by prior councils for years. 2013 saw an entire year of tremendous public engagement around the issue of neighbors and others complaining about the gun club. Jim kept that train moving forward and the result was a first ever shooting range ordinance for Cape Elizabeth that was improved in January 2014. Teacher and school, the teacher and school principal in Jim is always there, engaging, encouraging, mentoring, and exacting. He's incredibly involved and always on the pulse of their issues in town. There are many different styles of leadership. To me, as leaders, Jim's background as school teacher, principal, and businessman all meld here. And we all know what that's like because he's always asking us, how can we make this better? How can we do this better? Let's take another look at this. <laughs> and his passion for public service and serving Kate to the best of his ability was always present. He worked harder than anyone, was always prepared, and always pushed us to be the best we could be for Cape Elizabeth. Jim, you made us all better at what we do, and you taught us to keep setting that bar at a better place, and we've been incredibly fortunate to have a colleague of your caliber with us on the town council. Thank you. Wow. Wow. probably neglected um, to ask uh, Jamie first if he wanted to say a few parting words. Sure. I, I didn't prepare any remarks because, you know, it just easily comes from the, the heart and the mind. But first of all, I'd like to just thank the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. It's been a pleasure to serve for three years on the council. Uh, I see a journalist here in the room. It's been nice to deal with the journalists as well. Uh, They've always been present, and the, the participation by our town and town council meetings is really quite phenomenal. You know, some of the issues, you get a lot more people than we have tonight, obviously, but um, often we'll have quite, quite a turnout, and people can be quite passionate, um, but generally very respectful of each other's um, feelings on issues, and I appreciate that. I've, I've always have, uh, had an open door policy, and people have been um, very 
good at reaching out and expressing themselves. And although sometimes we hear that things get a little heated, I've never felt personally um, attacked or uh, maligned by uh, any members of the community. And uh, I felt that people have been very respectful to me during my term and that I've enjoyed serving, <clears throat> serving the town and the citizens of this town. Um, uh, I thank Caitlin for her kind words and she's been my, my closest friend and confidant on the council. And uh, we've had a good time together and I've enjoyed serving with everyone. I can't believe how fast time goes. It seems like Frank Governale used to be sitting here and Molly's been here two years already, you know, and like Patty, it seems like she just got here and Dave was just here, you know, it's just yeah. amazing how fast it's going. I've really enjoyed uh, spending time with all of you and uh, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, the, the staff, you know, Mike and I have been friendly even before I was on the council. Um, he spent some time in Orno, my hometown, so he no, knew my father before he knew me. And uh, Deb's a fantastic town clerk. Um, I've always enjoyed working with her. And Maureen's been a, a great person to work with on the multiple committees that I've worked, had the pleasure to work with her on. So thank you to everyone. All right. I'll, uh, I'll miss you all. Thank you, Jamie. Jim, would you like to say a few words? Well, again, um, you know, I, a big congratulations to, to Jessica and to Sarah and to Jamie for stepping up and being elected to replace us uh, yesterday. It takes a lot to put yourself out there. Um, in today's world, it's, uh, it's just uh, you're, it's going to come at you from every angle, but the willingness to do that is, is pretty impressive. Again, like, like Jamie, um, you know, I want to thank the citizens for giving me the opportunity to serve them over the last six years in two different elections. I mean, it's a big, big responsibility, and uh, and it's pretty neat to have that confidence and and uh, from the community because again, it's uh, I brought my kids and family up here, and it's a great place to live, and uh, part of my rationale for wanting to do this is to make it that and to try to to keep it that way and and to add my whatever my little tidbit is to that 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 uh, goal. Um, I I do want to thank my colleagues on the council, the current council. Um, uh, without you, I mean, uh, this list is, is flattering at, in many ways, but, but the reality is it's all work that we did. I mean, it, no matter how you slice it, I mean, whether, whether it starts with, with one counselor and it winds up being everybody's work in the end, and, and we need to take, uh, take solace in the fact that this is hard work and it's, you're not going to please everybody. I think it's Kathy Ray's comment, if half the room liked it and half didn't, I guess we did a good job. And, uh, and in many cases, um, that's the case. Past councils, I mean, I've had the privilege of working with, with Penny Jordan, um, with Frank Alvinelli, with Sarah Lennon, um, with Dave Sherman, with Ann Swift Keata, in addition to the group that's here today. And that's a pretty uh, impressive list of folks that, that have also put themselves out there to, to continue to, to, to perpetuate the, the great community that we've all grown to love and, and serve. Um, I want to thank Michael in particular. Um, he and I have had, a, I think, a great relationship. It's, it's, it's been a, a one of mutual respect and understanding. It's been one that uh, at times has been a love-hate relationship. Um, and I say that in a positive way because part of the pushback or the healthy tension that exists, no matter what we do, and whatever we do in life, um, usually results in something better. Uh, whether it's an individual growth or whether it's something that 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 has an impact on the community. So Michael, um, your leadership, again, I really appreciate because I think that in some ways I'm a better person after my 12, now 13 years of volunteering in this community and you've been a, a significant part of that. Deb, you've been the rock of Gibraltar, the support person. You're, um, um, you know, I guess if, if something happened, I think the lights would go off or the wiring would be not quite right, but you, you're just one of those people that I, that I look upon as, as being really helpful in making things happen here. The staff, the department heads, Peter who's sitting in the audience today, um, for the support that they give to the good work that we create in some ways as counselors, they deliver it. They have to deliver it, um, but we couldn't do it without them. Um, 
and I think that it's all part of a, a you could argue a well-oiled machine at one level, but the fact of the matter is I think everybody here is for the same reason. They want to make this and continue to make Cape Elizabeth a great place to live. And I think the final point I want to make is I want to thank my wife, Kathy, um, <clears throat> her unwavering support in allowing me to do this work, meetings at night, during the day, on weekends, in the morning, on the phone. Um, this lady has put up with <laughs> more than I could ever imagine. Um, and uh, I think that uh, one, of the, one of the problems tonight is that um, I'm going to be underfoot more often at home. <laughs> um, and that's a problem. Uh, she either has to develop more hobbies or interests or find some book club that she can join or whatever. Or I've got to do that. Um, but I can tell you that uh, the two of us are um, you know, we've been married now 44 years, so um, I know we'll find a new chapter and a new effort, and we do have a grandchild now that we're going to spend more time with. So, but again, um, thank you for your kind words, uh, Jessica, and to the council that will continue after Jamie and I depart the room. Two JWs, by the way, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, I have the greatest confidence that, uh, that you'll lead us in a place that, that uh, to continue to make Cape Elizabeth a great spot. And um, it's been fun, it's been challenging, and I thought this was gonna be a quiet year, but it really wasn't. It was actually noisier than it's been over the last five, but um, it's, um, it's all good work, and I thank you for putting the time and talent into it, because it's, uh, people have to do this, and I'm so glad that we had people step up, and I'm real excited about the next round. So, thank you. Thank you, Jim. And um, I would like to um, congratulate Jessica on her re-election <coughs> to council for another three years, and also to Jamie Garvin and Sarah Lennon, who will be joining us in December. So mm -hmm. thank wow. you both. Um, we will move on then to Finance Committee reports. Um, Jim. Well, you've got, the, um, you've got your uh, dashboard in there today. And, um you know, I mean, there are a couple of highlights. I think the, the biggest one that's pretty amazing is that the, the gift shop sales are up to over $50,000 over budget. And, you know, it's just hard to believe. I mean, uh, almost, what, 12% above the projection. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a yeoman's uh, summer with uh, traffic from the, the, the ships. Yeah. And uh, that group works very hard. and. Uh, when you consider the size of that facility to put that number of dollars through it. And then, of course, we had our audit meeting to talk about we had a over and short of, what, 100 bucks or something. It's hard to believe in many ways, but a real positive number there. Uh, revenue sharing is up 42% as well. Um, excise taxes continue to be up, new vehicles being purchased. <clears throat> if you look under the ex expenditure category, um, again, you can see the, you know, the, the things there where there are differences that, uh, that are explainable. Public works over time. In that Tall Shirts anniversary concert, which, which again is one of my issues relative to looking at revenue in the park. If we have more and more of those types of things and we have to pay for them, how do we pay for them? And it really shouldn't be the taxpayer. And uh, the rest of it, again, this, uh, we'll turn this over to the next finance chair and see how it gets improved. We have a new uh, business manager who may want to add some value and make some changes and improve it. But again, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to give credit for this to the original idea to Jessica, uh, because she felt it would be nice to have a one-pager. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to give credit to Michael, given all of the sort of ups and downs of last year for making it happen. But um, I think this kind of a litmus test of what's taking place is, is better than you having to read 27 pages of what I call a, a pretty bad eye chart. So, so thank you. Thank you, Jim. Has questions for Jim? Okay. Then we will move on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. I don't see anybody. So uh, we'll move on beyond that to the town manager's monthly report. Yes. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Chairman Ray. Just a, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to note that we're now a couple of days past Cape Elizabeth's 250th anniversary. Uh, you know, I, I, I just know there was an event uh, on November 1st. I know the Chairman spoke at it, not too sure 
who else was all there, but I really want to thank the committee who organized all of the different activities. Barbara Powers was, just was an excellent leader of the effort. Uh, the Capitals with Historical Preservation Society uh, just did a tremendous job with tours and other activities. Obviously, the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation uh, with the concert that, uh, that Jim mentioned. Uh, you know, it, was, it was just nice to see so many different activities that involve the community and, and different groups of the community that might not always come together. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was just wonderful to, to see that all of it was citizen-driven as to what occurred. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that those that, that participated in it enjoyed it. And, I, you know, I look, you know, every, every committee and every project seems to have a legacy of some type. And, you know, there, there are many important things. But, you know, like just the banners out here in the, the center of the town. You know, now we've established the, the beginning of having banners, and we'll have additional banners, you know, advertising different things. You know, that'll be one, just one minor thing, but, but yet, the, you know, changes the appearance and the feel of the community uh, when you begin to do, to do something like that. So I, want, I just want to acknowledge the 250th anniversary and, again, uh, thank that committee for its work. Uh, second, I, I do want to mention that we had an election yesterday. Uh, I want to thank Deborah and all of the election staff for their leadership in uh, conducting an election that, uh, you know, from every account went very smoothly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not always easy to find people to work elections these days. And if anyone knows of anyone, they should, uh, or if anyone's watching, uh, and they know someone might be willing to work elections, they should, they should talk to Deborah because, uh, particularly as we look forward to an election a year from now, I guess it's November 8th that we heard today. Uh, you know, we're going to need, be needing uh, more folks to, to work with Deborah uh, to, to carry out that election. Uh, finally, I do want to make mention, uh, it's the, the last meeting of this council year. Uh, two, two councilors are leaving, uh, Jamie and Jim. But, but I think it's also a time to, you know, reflect on the year. I know, you know, when there's a, uh, presumably a new council chairman elected next uh, month will be a little bit of highlights of the year. But I, I look at, uh, you know, particularly with, with two councilors leaving, and, you know, think of the different issues that they've worked on. You know, sh short-term rentals, roosters, uh, the, the fire and rain committee, whether or not we have five-story buildings, special event facilities, you know, communication strategies, uh, you know, the, the aftermath of the accident a year ago. Uh, at the at the transfer station, trying to deal with deal with that, and you know, this is the council that approved in the library, uh, uh, which will be soon opening, and you know, and, and I think you know when when anyone serves on a council, you know, there's there's the softer things that you contribute, you know, your your you know the, the changing of di sort of direction, the things like improving communication, that, and then there's the tangible things that, that you can actually see. Uh, you know, su such as the library. And I, I think everyone can feel good uh, about their participation in those activities and what they accomplish. And, and you know, this council, you know, it's alluded to, it doesn't always, you don't always agree with each other. Uh, sometimes you go home and you probably lose a little sleep over a few things that happen. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if it's a healthy tension. Sometimes it isn't healthy. Uh, but, but at the same time, it, you know, th that's democracy. And it's, it's good that the, the discussions are held, they're held out in the open. And, uh, you know, the, uh, you know I, I've never gone home from a meeting in the last few years that I haven't felt that every single member of the council voted the way they did on a particular issue, other than thinking that it was the best thing for the community. You know, it didn't matter what side they were on, for or against. I think everyone went home thinking that they had voted the best way for the community on, on, on whatever the, the, the issue might be. And I think, you know, I think it's, it's, it's you know, good that we live in a community like that. And, you know, one especially wish Jamie and uh, Jim well. As Jamie alluded to, you know, I don't know how old Jamie is, but I'm, I'm guessing when I first met him, he might have been in a carriage. Uh, <laughs> I, I, had, I had actually campaigned. Now, your mother ran for office, too. She ran for something. She, she uh, was on the county committee for yeah, she, she was, a, I don't usually admit to being a Democrat publicly, manages a nonpartisan, but I was very active with, with both with uh, Jim and Jack and Jamie and parents on, in Democratic activities when I was a student uh, at, at the, the University of Maine back in the, the 
late to mid to late 70s, and, you know, got, got to know the Wagners, and, uh, you know, uh, it's been nice with Jamie and the council, I saw his father a few times when uh, he visited. Uh, you know, the other thing about Jamie is, you know, he, he's been a counselor, but it's really been good to have a perspective of a town center business owner as well. Uh, you know, the, the town deals with a lot of town center issues, and, you know, someone that, that runs a, that, that owns a, you know, the, the local buzz, you know, a place where people gather and there's a lot of interaction and knows, knows what it's like to deal with the different regulations and issues and, you know, the, the ideas that come and go with a place like the town center, and as well as having an office, you know, in, 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 in another building, uh, you know, that, that's been really helpful. It's been really helpful you know, a great contribution. Jim, been around a little longer. Uh, actually, I haven't known Jim as long as I've uh, known the Wagners, uh, but it, it, at the same time, uh, you know, I, I, you know, everyone else, I'm not going to repeat all the other things I said about Jim, but, you know, one thing that, that wasn't mentioned that I didn't think is worthy of, the, the place where the council is sitting, these tables would not have happened if it wasn't for Jim. And, you know, there, there used to be this big, hulking, you know, every, sending every wrong message out as to the council being above everyone and, you know, behind this big barrier. And Jim said, no, it needs to have a different feel. It needs to have a different approach. And it, it was because of him that these tables are here. We, we get rid of that monstrosity that was here before. I called it the bullpen, and that had nothing to do with what was said. Uh, it just reminded me of, a, you know, a, a big enclosed structure. And, you know, that, that, I think, you know, that was, you know, Jim can, you know, te, you know, Jessica pointed out, you know, getting the new library started, big things, but sometimes it's those little things that, that, that really make a difference. So. I was fighting to get the septic system from my mother's house in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And I sat there and I took a couple of pictures and I sent them to you. I said, this is the way our chamber should look. Yep. You're on the same level as the people who are talking to you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, that's kind of... Yeah, and I, I, don't know, I find this a lot more comfortable. And, it, you know, it wouldn't have happened without your leadership. Well, uh, thank you. And I can mention so many other things, but you know. That's I, fine, thank you. you know, I've got to be, I always got to be careful what I say for councillors, because we see with Sarah's, they might come back and run for office sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to be, you know, non-political, non-whatever, so, you know, I, I, I've got to be careful what I say, but it's, it's great working with all of you. Yeah. Uh, I wish you both council as well. And, you know, you all, you're, you're all here without pay. And, you know, thank you for, for all you do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mike. Um, we will move on then to the draft <clears throat> minutes of the October 14th meeting, which is in your packet. Is there a motion to accept? Molly? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Jim? Any uh, changes, arrows, omissions? Okay. All in favor? All right. Um, then we will go on to the public hearing um, so we have a public hearing right now for the special events ordinance provisions and related zoning overlay map um, there's two people in the audience were either one of you going to speak about this no I didn't think so so um, we let's see I'll open the public hearing and I'll close the public hearing that was hard um, so then we will move on then to item 126, which, which is consideration of the special events ordinance provisions and related zoning overlay map. Um, and I guess then we would be looking for a motion to accept this. Yeah, um, if, if you have any interest in me introducing the... Absolutely, that would be great. Uh, we worked on this in the ordinance <clears throat> at... Uh, over I don't know, three meetings, maybe. Um, just to, and just to summarize the work that we did, uh, th this uh, ordinance amendment is with regards to um, a special event facility, and that's uh, described in the ordinance as a building or a portion of the building, outdoor areas, or related parking, which is made available for consideration to individuals or groups to accommodate private functions, including but not limited banquets, weddings, and anniversaries. Uh, the other portions that would be, um, this would be in the overlay district. We decided that, that was the best way to go on recommendation of the planning board. The ordinance committee agreed. Uh, would be for the residential zoning districts, RA, RB, and RC, where there's a buffer from abutting neighbors. 
Um, this again is to allow small scale hospitality venues on large properties. Large properties is defined uh, to be 15 acres, um, all of which must be included in the overlay district. Uh, in order to comply with that uh, 15 acres, it includes the lot where the event facility is located and any adjoining lot, any other lot that is held in common ownership and sharing a portion of the lot line. So the, the, the best example is the one that started this all would be down on the um, Brave Island uh, farm area uh, where the Sprague properties are. Uh, the Sprague Corporation, what's, what's the name of the Wentworth Lodge? Wentworth Lodge. That's what it's called. Lodge. So the, there, I believe, it's the Wentworth Lodge is not on a 15-acre lot, but the adjoining property that's owned by the same uh, entity does make it 15 acres. Um, in order to be uh, eligible for this, an applicant would have to go through site plan review. Um, unlike most site plan reviews, the site plan approval would only be, be valid for three years, and then you would have to come back and do a, a, a new site plan review. Hmm. So it does have a, a sunset provision. Um, the performance standards include that the special event shall not exceed 275 attendees. Uh, they can have no more than 12 events in any calendar year. That amplification of music uh, shall not commence earlier than 9 in the morning and shall not last later than 10 p.m. And that no event shall exceed eight hours in duration, excluding setup and breakdown. That's about it. Great. Did so with that, yeah, I'm happy <clears throat> to uh, make a motion that we approve uh, the amendment to the ordinance to uh, include a special event facility. Oh, right. And the, uh, the map, of the, the changes to the official zoning map. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Is there a second? second. <clears throat> I'll second it. Oh, I think Patty got ahead of you. <laughs> thank you, Patty. Questions, comments? I just have a quick question. I, I have no issue with anything about the ordinance other than the fact I just um, wanted to quickly hear what was the rationale behind um, 15 acres, let's say, versus a 10 acre lot, just quickly, and then under performance standards, um, coming up with you know 275 attendees. It makes sense to me not to have music past a certain time. If you're on a big piece of property, that carries. But I'm just curious why they limited it to only 12 events and 275. Yeah, so I'll address the second question first. So the 275, we looked at uh, different types of uh, communities around Maine and similar ordinances. Okay. And that seemed to be a number that was between like a 250 in one town and 300 in another. We thought it was a reasonable number. Okay. There's no magic to it. Okay. In fact, we debated whether or not it should be 300 or 250 or 200. And yeah. we, we were comfortable, everybody on the ordinance committee was comfortable with the number. Um, mm -hmm. we, we debated the eight hour thing, and I remember Caitlin and I were thinking, well, maybe we make it 10, you know, but ultimately, um, the planning board suggested that, and we understood their rationale that, you know, <coughs> it, yeah, if you're going to allow up to 12 events in a year, eight hours, you know, it adds up on the uh, abutters, and, and even if they might be your family members, they still might not want much more than that. Okay. Uh, so it, we thought that was reasonable. Um, what was your first question again? Uh, the other one was just why 15 acres, let's say, oh, yeah. versus 10, you know? Um, I, I think the goal was not to <coughs> really encourage people to have special event facilities in town, but to accommodate a request, but to make it fair to, to yeah. other potential large landowners to, to have this opportunity, but not to necessarily say, hey, we want more special events uh, facilities in town. Okay. So we thought to have a, a higher acreage would uh, limit it, the impact on butters. Okay. Other qu Jim. Kathy, I mean, we didn't have any comment this evening, and I know that Jamie's a, a, been a big proponent of in, in you know, talking, talking to the, those that are most impacted by this. Was there a lot of input from people who might be impacted by this particular ordinance well, in, in the three meetings? Absolutely. We, we solicited a lot of input from the Sprague Corporation particular since it was mm -hmm. uh, they that started the process on this and uh, we worked with them on that mm -hmm. because uh, the initial draft they weren't that happy with but we, we had you know the public was welcome to come and join us and we had some comment from the public beyond the spray court um, mm -hmm. but uh, 
we certainly solicited input and took that into account and changed the ordinance to uh, accommodate the request of the public. Good. Well, that's good. I, I think it's great to have that on television tonight because if there was nobody here for this public hearing to, to at least reiterate that, it's a good thing. So. Other questions? No more comments? No? All right, then all in favor? Great. Then moving on to item 127, the rescue coverage update from the fire chief. I think I was going to turn to Mike first. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Ray. The, the fire chief, Peter Gleason, is here as well. Uh, the council had a workshop uh, a week or two ago uh, in which the fire chief presented uh, issues and concerns with uh, having paramedic, paramedic coverage 24-7. Uh, uh, because of changing community demographics, changing training requirements, uh, longer visits in hospitals, uh, people's own personal circumstances, uh, you know, we've had a dramatic reduction in the availability of volunteers of late uh, to, to respond to rescue calls. So, uh, you know, Peter uh, showed some real leadership and came forward with, with a proposal uh, at the beginning of the calendar year to increase the service of having a paramedic on duty 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Sure. But, you know, as that's been implemented, it's been very helpful, but it, it still doesn't completely meet the need of the community as it now stands. So uh, the chief has recommended uh, that we uh, go to 24-7 uh, you know, coverage. Uh, there is some cost to that, uh, about $25,000 for the remainder of this fiscal year, an annualized cost of about $48,000. Uh, we also, if we're going to be having people stay at the fire station overnight, uh, we're required to have some uh, air exchange uh, in the rooms where, where people would be quartered overnight. And so also recommending uh, $25,000 uh, to uh, improve the quarters for the overnight personnel. Uh, this would have long-term implications for the budget in that, you know, the, the revenues, as Peter explained during the workshop, uh, you know, are somewhat governed by uh, Medicaid, Medic uh, reimbursements, uh, the main care reimbursements, mm -hmm. and they, they just, you know, you, you can't, uh, collect more than the state will allow for fees for, for those particular services. So anyway, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate the fire chief's work on this, the, uh, the work of Eric Wellman as, as well, who's one of our deputy chiefs, who's the, the head of uh, the EMS program at Southern Maine Community College, who we're very fortunate to have as, as our uh, deputy chief. Uh, so Peter's here to answer any detailed questions, but uh, we do recommend you adjust the rescue budget from 340 177 to 375,000 uh, for the current fiscal year, and that you appropriate $25,000 uh, from the general fund, undesignated fund balance to improve the quarters. Thank you, Mike. Is there any questions that people have? Yes, Caitlin. I have questions for Chief Gleason or Mike, I'm not sure. Um, don't get me wrong, I love the concept because I'm the one who got the ball rolling. I just have a few questions about why we're required to have sleeping quarters. If we're just adding an additional eight-hour shift, what will be different for that paramedic who's being paid the same amount during the nighttime shift versus the two that are on for the other two eight-hour shifts? Are there other jobs that daytime people are doing that he's not and they're getting the same pay? I guess I'll, I'll go one at a time. Well, well part of it is during, and we, unlike the police department, we don't have patrol responsibilities or the public works. We can't plow. We can't go out and solicit patients. So you're, you're in the station sitting there. So it, it'd be more attractive if we allowed them to rest during that time and have the proper quarters to do that, I think, than to have them sitting up in a chair, staring out into the night, waiting for what may or may not happen. And, and it's fairly typical of any... any uh, fire department that once from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. you're allowed to sleep in quarters so we're just going along with that okay. my question I guess it's more pointed is Mike said you were required so what is requiring us to have sleeping quarters just that we want to be more welcoming and accommodating or is there something actually well Mike, Mike mentioned required that we have to get ventilation into the rooms that we're going to use They're interior rooms they don't have windows they don't have access to fresh air they're next to diesel 
powered equipment that w could start at any time. So we want to make sure that they have fresh air and that they're well accommodated. Okay, so it's if we're going to let them sleep, we're required. We're not required to provide them sleeping quarters. I just want to make sure we have it right. And then is the second person, there's going to be two people sleeping per night? Is yes. that yes. what I'm getting? And so the second person's only getting $50 to sleep there for the night, which is more understanding in my mind than the paramedic who's getting paid the same amount to sleep for his shift. I just didn't know if there's a difference. Part of it is, is obviously there's a, there's a difference in training and license level with the paramedic. And also we want to be able to attract the paramedics. There's a limited pool of paramedics available. So, you know, we have to make ourselves attractive and a preferred employer if we want to keep good staffing there. I think there's more opportunity with the lesser license levels. It's a bigger pool, so we have an opportunity. We also came up with that number because we could accommodate it within our existing payroll budget. We may have to look at that coming for, going forward if that's the proper way, but this is how we could accommodate the changes within the funds that we have requested. Okay. Jim? Uh, you had a lot of publicity. You were on television and you had some newspaper articles, whatever. Do we get any feedback as a result of that amount of communication? I, I have, I've, all I've gotten is positive, but I'm not sure that people will always present the negative to me. So. Mm -hmm. I think I think if it would be if there was negatives, there would be people here tonight, or they would have addressed the counselors through email or whatever. Yeah, because I didn't get the emails. I don't know whether anybody else did about the subject, but there was quite a bit of um, after our workshop. There was a lot of you know sort of buzz, if you will. And I was just curious if you got any feedback, but none. Okay. Anyone else? Just one more. Sorry. When the town center station was built. I thought it was built so that it, it could accommodate sleeping quarters. Is, are we altering the plan for how that was supposed to work umpteen years ago so that now we need to make all these My understanding, Caitlin, all along, is there was ventilation in those rooms, and there's actually controls. They don't seem to control anything. <laughs> we popped all the ceiling tiles. We can't find any ductwork, any venting. So I don't know if... So that would explain why my, I thought. My understanding you that thought that ventilation was there, but we can't find it. Okay. So. Hmm. so maybe we should look into however many years ago the contractor might not have done something. Mike? Just, just on this. My, my recollection is that we, we reserved spaces for them, but, but we, we decided to hold off to outfit okay. them and spend the extra money yeah. so that it could actually be used as that. But there were these two rooms that, that were set aside. Uh, for that purpose, and then you know, eventually other stuff they put into the rooms, and they need to be cleared out and returned to their original intended purpose. But it was it was a deliberate move not to spend extra money until we actually had to use them for that. Purpose. Is that building was what 12, 12 years ago anyway? It was done fifteen. Oh, it was around the year ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, so yeah, ninety eight maybe. We've managed to go quite a while without That's making the change. <laughs> You know, if we had put it in 16 years ago, by now it would probably need to be replaced anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. no? So, um, would someone like to make a motion in reference to this item? Jessica. I move that we uh, authorize the additional uh, uh, appropriated amount to the rescue coverage budget. Thank you. Is there a second? Oh. I think Jamie I saw first. Jamie so. had his hand up. Thank you, Jamie. Um, comments, questions? All in favor? <clears throat> then we'll move on to item 128, pickleball. Mike? Yes, pickleball reminds yeah. me a little bit of the rooster issue. You know, it, 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 <laughs> at, at the very beginning, you know, you wonder why we're dealing with pickleball issues. But then you find out is that people, in something we have got a lot of emails on, particularly the Fulton Advisory Commission, people feel very strongly about tennis courts uh, and wanting to have courts for tennis courts for tennis. And there's, there's other individuals who, who really enjoy playing this, what I think is a newer activity called pickleball, and they both need flat services. So what's happened is, there was an attempt to accommodate them at the beginning of the year, and it, it, it uh, particularly the tennis players have been very upset. And so the Fort Williams Advisory Commission tried to deal with the issue and then said, you know, they don't want to deal with it alone. It's a bigger issue, and it also involves 
the tennis courts at the high school. So w what I'm suggesting is that we, we bring some representatives from the Community Service Advisory Commission and the Fort, Fort Williams Advisory Commission together to talk about it. And I also discussed this with the superintendent of schools, maybe informally also adding the, the athletic director uh, to participate in the discussion. You know, th this is, you know, a sort of form of mediation. They'll, they'll hear all the different parties. Uh, but, you know, the, the Fort Williams Committee recommended the council do this directly, or they seem to recommend that. And I'm not sure the council with all the, you know, with the new goal setting and all the other priorities, whether or not you, you best not delegate this to uh, the two committees. So that's my recommendation as you do that. You ask for a report back by March 1. Thank you, Michael. Um, is there a motion to um, put together that ad hoc committee? Yeah. Jim? On behalf of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, we wholeheartedly recommend you do that. I'm moving this question as written. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jim. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Patty. Um, discussion? Molly? I just thought there was a very nice memo written to the council from the chair of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Lise Pratt. She did a great job outlining what the concerns and issues were. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Lise, and I'm ready to vote. Okay. All right, then all in favor? <coughs> great. New committee. Um, item 129, report on Dectron Humidity Control Unit at Don Richards Community Pool. Michael. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Right. I just wanted to give you a heads up that this is an issue that, that's uh, coming during the budget process. You uh, had had a discussion with the Dectron Unit. My recollection is there was an original proposal to spend less money than this, but it was, you know, how, you, there were lots of questions, what was it really accomplishing? Should we be investing money in something that really had issues? And you, you asked us to go out and get a, an engineering study <coughs> done. Uh, the engineering study has been done. They came back with a recommendation. It's a $603,000 issue, according to the recommendation. Uh, and what this does is the, it, it's the whole air exchange system for the pool. And the unit is, is about the length of this room, uh, maybe not quite that much, and almost as wide as the windows for the. <coughs> The, uh, the edge of that wall there. So the pre, you know, it looks like a lot of money for an air exchange unit, but if you actually go and look at it, it it's a big, big device. I, I just want you to be aware that the study has been done uh, and uh, recommend that you, you uh, talk about it with the school board at a future workshop. So Mike, do you want us, do we need to vote on that or we just send it to Whatever workshop? you'd like. Okay, somebody want to make a motion to send that to a workshop? Molly? So move. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Jim, thank you. Any discussion? If you remember at the meeting, they, they were spending, you know, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year for the last several years, and they had told us they had planned to do the same to limp along. And I think we said at one point, do you just bite the bullet and deal with the question and fix it? Um, and I read the report. It, you know, your eyes will glass over as you read it. Um, it's it's not, not exciting stuff. But I, I do think taking it up uh, as a joint effort with the school board is a good idea. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else comment? No? All in favor? All right. <coughs> then we'll move on to item 130, which is the report of the Solid Waste and Recycling Long-Term Planning Committee. And what we're doing here is we're looking to schedule a public hearing for Monday, January 4th, which um, I believe will be at one of our regular town council meetings. So, um, unless there's any questions, is there a motion to do so? Jessica. I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Patty, thank second. you. Second. Questions, comments? No. All in favor? All right. Item 131, Town Council Goals. In your packet, you will find um, a copy of the Town Council Goals. And Mike has uh, done a nice job at, you know, putting together um, updates of how far we've gotten and whether we've completed them and so forth and so on. So um, I don't know if anybody <coughs> wants to discuss any particular goal. Um, this is, like I said, it's sort of an update, um, but maybe somebody wants to make some comment or suggestion or so forth. So I don't know if you had the chance to look at it, but does anybody have anything to say about our goals? I think we're, we're trucking along. Mm -hmm. Michael, did you want to say anything? Or? No, time's running out. 
Okay. Mm. Yeah. I don't mean at the meeting, I mean for the year with the goals. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> trying to move fast. Thank Thanks for reminding J Jamie and myself about that. Yeah, time's running out. Yeah. <laughs> tick, tick, right? Okay. Um, well, hearing nothing, I'll move on to item 132, which is citizen input on the Goddard mm. Mansion. Um, and this has, is directly related to um, one of the town council goals, which is to seek citizen input <clears throat> on the future of the Goddard Mansion. And the survey included in the tax bills contained the following question, and 793 responses were received. Um, and then you can see um, below the different percentages. So um, in order to sort of move this along and you know, not just gather information, but do something with it, um, where there's a suggestion that the town council formally adopt as a policy uh, the following statement, and it's short, so I'll read it. Um, it says, the Goddard Mansion at Fort Williams Park has been repaired many times after two fires in the 1980s. The interior frame structure was removed and the walls have been capped and partially sealed. In 2009, the council voted to seal off access to make the building as safe as possible while still maintaining the facade for historical appreciation. The town council affirms that the Goddard Mansion should continue to be stabilized in a safe manner. So, um, having read that, um, is there, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect or some other motion? Jessica? I move that we formally adopt as policy the statement as read. Thank you, is there a second? Uh, Molly? Thank you. Caitlin. I just have a question. Like, where do you find those policies? Like if we make this a policy, where would one go to look up these policies that yeah. we make these statements and say policy? Mike? We, uh, thank you. We, we do have a section of the website that has policies, reports, ordinances, et cetera. What happened in this particular instance is, you know, when preparing this draft, I tried to figure out if the, if the council had ever adopted a policy for the Goddard Mansion. And what I found was that the last time the council really formally dealt with it, you have gotten a recommendation from the then Fort Wayne's Advisory Commission that said to tear it down so that you just had a very little base of the walls left, up to like three or four feet high. And the council basically didn't accept that policy and basically said, let's try to make it safer and whatever, but really didn't adopt the policy. I think by, by adopting <coughs> this, you know, it, it, it sort of, it's, it informs anyone who, who looks, you know, who's looking for the policy, yeah, here it is, this is what the council said in November of uh, 2015. Of course, the council could change the policy at any point, but, but at least you, you're really affirming <coughs> the current policy, even though it was never formally adopted. This actually adopts a formal policy for posting on the website. Thank you. Patty. Um, Okay, so I'm glad that we are adopting a policy about this and that the, the community agreed and citizens that we should stabilize it. I think it's a, um, an incredible piece at Fort Williams. My question for you is, if you're looking at stabilizing, is it every couple of years that you have to put money in it to stabilize it? Is that a year-to-year -year cost? What, what are those numbers? Or you have a basic idea? Yeah. Michael? You know, it's, you know, some years you spend nothing, some years you have to spend more money. You know, it's something we monitor every year. But basically, I would say on average, and this is on average, mm -hmm. it probably would equal about $5,000 a year. But you know, one year you might spend 15 and you might spend zero for the next two. Okay. Jim. Uh, I just, again, this is, this is something different, okay, in my experience. Mm -hmm. But having lived with the, the, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission this last year, this would clarify and eliminate some of the debate, dialogue, conjecture, I think, I heard, somebody told me, uh, this is very clear. And I gotta tell you, that has been one of our pieces lacking this year. Because we've talked about this mansion, you know, making it into bathrooms, making it into a gift shop, making it into a welcome center, making it into a, a restaurant. I mean, it's just been unbelievable. And what you have here is clarity um, that will go a long way to giving direction. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for direction. There's no need to waste time on something like this if we have a clarity in our purpose. So I'm, I'm there. Molly. I agree with you, Jim. And I also agree with you, Patty. That is a wonderful sort of 
half building that's left there. It was, I think, important architecturally and probably um, structurally until the 1980s when we started having fires in there. Um, if we had seen input from citizens that they wanted to see something in particular done with it, I would have supported that wholeheartedly. I'd still like to see something done with it in the future, but I agree with you. I think it's really important for the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, mm. for the town as a whole, to know that we have a policy in place. Yeah. We have clarity. We understand what the expectations are, and more than half of the people who mm. responded to the survey told us what they wanted. Yeah. Michael, what happened to that grassroots group that sort of a couple of years back, there was a grassroots. No, I, it, it's funny, funny you should mention it. it what what uh, Council Walsh was referring to was that there was there was a group that talked about raising big big dollars to do something, and uh, it, it sort of fizzled out. There. I did speak mm -hmm. within the last week to one of the the folks who uh, was <clears> very <throat> much behind that. One of the neighbors uh, who's who's a volunteer in the gift shop, and. Uh, we talked about this. I mentioned this was coming up on the, the agenda and what the specific recommendation was. And, uh, the citizen was very happy with, with the recommendation hmm. as, as it stands. Interesting. Jimmy. Yeah, I, like, like Molly, I, I've, you know, this is one of my council goals. You know, so I was uh, interested to see the input from the community. But I was uh, pleased to see that close to 30% of the people were interested in alternative uses. I'm happy with the, uh, the stabilization. <clears throat> Um, policy for now, but uh, I'm glad to see that the citizenry is interested in a possible repurpose. I think it's a beautiful building. Um, you know, having just gone through the, to the 250th anniversary party at the, the inn and seen some of the old photos and looking at some of the, the, the I looked at the 200th anniversary book that you took it out from the library once and looked at all the photos of historical buildings. There's not a lot of historical buildings left in Cape Elizabeth. For the public to see, and this is one of the few remaining ones that everybody can see. Um, I'm not crazy about the chain link fence around it. You know, I, I wish it could be more of like a, an old-fashioned wooden fence or something that was a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, but maybe that's something that everybody can address in the future. But um, yeah, this is a you know I think an acceptable sound policy for now, and I, I hope that you know we can continue to talk about it in the future. Thank you, Jamie. Anybody else? Um, I, I'm going to weigh in. Um, it, it's on a, a little bit of a different um, piece. I, I think it's very interesting that um, almost 800 people responded because um, sometimes we get input from very small groups, um, and they are, you know, ha are very passionate about something. But this is a statistically significant number for this town. And so I think it's very important that, you know, sometimes we hear from folks that we um, are not reaching out to the public and we're not asking the public. And this is a perfect example that we did. We asked them. And this, you know, for now, this is, you know, more than 50% said we want you to stabilize it. So it allows us to, as you said, there's clarity around it. It allows us to have a policy in place for now and if something changes in the in the future then we can but I agree with Jim is that you know um, I, I think this helps to um, address some of the um, speculation and the I heard she said you know I think and, and that kind of thing and maybe set that aside for now so we can move on to some other items and it's not that we can't go back to it we can anytime we want but um, we asked you know, mm. the citizenry, and they said, this is what we think. Mm. And so we're saying, okay, we'll have a policy, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll move on. So um, anyway, all right, anybody else? It, 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 Jamie's point about the fence is an interesting one, because for the, for the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to look at that fence and maybe want to upgrade it, like we're doing with the Barber Walkway and things like that, we've made some major investments there. We just made some investments in stair, in, in having railings on stairwells that were dangerous. I mean, they're constantly looking at those little value-added spots. It's an interesting point that I'd, I'd like to take back to them because, you know, that maybe that's a place to invest, you know, and, and really upgrade it and maybe do something with some signage and some education. You know? mm -hmm. But 
all good stuff. And I'm, I'm with Kathy, too, because that's what was happening with them as they were listening to small pockets of feedback, and it wasn't necessarily representative of the larger group. And that's why this gave, gave, gave us a little more direction. So. Mm. Anybody else? Mm. We ready to vote? All in favor? Okay. Um, item <coughs> 133, again, same, same idea. Um, this was the citizen input on the old Thomas Memorial Library slash Spurwink School. Um, and um, there were 807 people that responded to this, and um, they broke it down as, as you can see below. So the recommendation is that the town council hereby request the town manager to inquire to all municipal departments and to the school department on potential public uses on the Spurwink School and to report back to the council at the December council meeting. And you can see that 51.5% um, of the 807 people wanted the building repurposed for public, public use. So um, is there a motion on this item? Jim? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Patty. I'll second thank that. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Molly. Again, I'll just say I really like that building a lot. I'm glad that we're considering reuse for a public purpose, and I'm glad to hear that over half of the respondents in the survey agreed and thought that was the right thing to do as well. Anyone else? We ready to vote? Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. So, uh, and this I guess is to Michael. Um, so given this sort of approach, which is kind of casting the net to see what, what comes up, if you have a department that moves from, we'll say, here over to there, then you've got space here that needs to be evaluated and repurposed or whatever. So it does kind of have a little bit of a, a domino effect, if you will, that's going to have to be um, looked at as a town <coughs> council, just, mm -hmm. just kind of heads up, because we looked at physical plant a couple years back when Frank Ovenelli was on the council, and, and that was that's just a caution on my part to say, you know, it isn't quite, okay, we'll move, we'll move you over there. Um, and then all of a sudden now we've got the second floor of this place empty. I mean, just, just thinking out loud. So. Thank you, Jim. Molly? I had the same thought. In fact, I, I think it was you who did some work. Maybe it was Jessica, but I think it was you who did some work for the Library Planning Committee on mm -hmm. assessing all of our yeah. existing public it, spaces. And facility things. use. Yep. Facility use report. And right. we had some spreadsheet, I think, that was done yes, that outlined yeah. all of the spaces that were available. So I think it's a pretty quick and easy task to look at where those dominoes might fall and, sure. and what else we could plug in. Yeah. It, we did that as part of the Library Building Committee. Good. So, just, Michael? Just, just on this, you know, in December, you know, I, I've already asked, you know, knowing that this goal was here, uh, knowing that what the citizens have said, I, I'm going to sort of commence the process of inquiring. Uh, you know, possible uses. And, you know, and I've gotten back, you know, the, the superintendent also is, has sent out an email to, I don't know, the whole school staff or, you know, she's doing a survey anyway, maybe it's, I'm not sure, of, you know, different, different suggested possibilities that the school department might use it for. You know, I've heard everything from pre-K to the superintendent's office to the technology department. I've heard the historical society. I've heard a senior citizen center and, you know, what, what I'm just going to do is gather up those comments and give them back to the, the, the new sitting council. And then, you know, I would think is, you know, maybe they might want to form a little group or something, you know, who knows? We'll see what the council wants to do with it. But you'll have that chance in December, those of you who are still, excuse me, those of you who are still here to uh, take all those comments and see what the ideas are and then figure out uh, what's best. You know, I would just hope that the building isn't empty for too, too long because buildings that are empty for too long, so it's, it's never healthy. And, uh, you, know, you know, maybe space will free up somewhere, and if, if that's the case, you know, we need to think that through as well. Okay. Great, thank you. Jamie. Yeah, my only uh, addition to that is that, you know, after you do your survey, if there's uh, not sufficient need for additional public use that you consider renting yeah. to the private mm -hmm. sector. Yeah. We ready to vote? All in favor? 
Great. Okay, and uh, item 134, town center intersection. Same scenario. Um, let's see, this was 799 responses, um, and 48.2% said the intersection is not a problem. Do not spend money on it. Um, so there is a recommendation um, for, a, I guess, a policy here that says the town council notes that the 2015 tax bill survey indicates that a majority of citizens do not believe the town center intersection at Route 77 Scott Dyer Road and Shore Road is in need of attention that would warrant spending any money on it. Therefore, the council will take no action <coughs> to study options to improve the intersection, but will continue to review at no municipal cost changes impacting traffic at the intersection and pedestrian issues in conjunction with reviewing pedestrian safety opportunities throughout the town center area. So is there a motion to accept that? So moved. Patty, thank you. Is there a second? Molly? I'll second that. Okay. Discussion, comments. Molly. I have two comments or questions for Mike. One is I know on the goals we had talked about contacting MDOT about reducing the speed limit through the center of town. I know they haven't responded yet. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to hear what we might take for next steps to address that. And then my second question is, um, I'm assuming that that is not, from MDOT's perspective, a failing intersection, and that we, we don't have any obligation to do anything with it, and that they're not going to encourage us to be doing anything with it. Maybe. Yes? No? <laughs> I'm always hesitant to speak with state agencies, but I really don't know what their thinking is. Mm. Uh, on your first point, you know, we, we did, many months ago, ask the state to get back to us, and typical state of Maine fashion, we're waiting months and months and months for a response. Uh, that's number one. Can we get back to them and uh, have another I'll, nudge? You know, the contact, yeah, we'll get, we'll get back to them. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the, the second thing is, you know, is the intersection failing? And, and, and I'm a little bit hesitant to answer that question. We, we, we have, we're probably going to have two development proposals come in in the next few months. My understanding <coughs> is, is that the, the new dentists in Dr. Dickinson's office have bought the old Cumberland Farms. Hmm. And, you know, they're starting to, uh, you know, to talk about possibly carrying down that building mm -hmm. and, you know, building a, a, some sort of a new facility. Secondly, uh, Dr. Zeb Meyerowitz yes. uh, has bought some of the hill property that's in back of the top box time triangle uh, rhododendron. And, you know, and, his, he, and he's planning to, uh, he and his wife are Zeb. planning to do some sort of development on the property that, yeah. that they'd be, the, I think they've purchased, I don't think it's an option they've purchased. So, you know, both are going to be applied to the planning board. And my guess is, is that the planning board will be looking at traffic studies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have not had a traffic study done. We will not have had a traffic study done since Cumberland Farms opened, mm -hmm. since the Key Bank closed, and s since the new library was, was repurposed. Right. Uh, you know, all of those things might show a level of service that is less than adequate. You know, back when the council rejected the monies for the other intersection improvement, there were limited times of the day where the, where the limited, where the level of service was well below the threshold of what you would want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the council decided not to address it at that time. And so as a result, other development proposals that have come in have not been held to the standard because the town indicated it was not to do it. You know, this could be an issue that the council and the planning board in the community may need to be dealing with, but at the same time, the, the short term is the, the majority of the citizens, 48.2% of them, but not a, a, a plurality, but a majority. Did I get that one right? No. The other way around. Yeah, majority, not a plurality. Uh, I knew the, the, the former uh, politician here would, would know that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, b basically said, don't spend money on it. So, you know, I, I, I think that there's a message, don't spend money on it. But, you know, I'm not willing to, to say that we, we might not see in these studies that, that there's, you know, there's a, you know, anyone who drives through that intersection, 
I understand the citizen says there's no problem, don't spend money on it, but anyone who drives through it recognizes that, you know, it, it's not the greatest intersection in the world. I agree. Yeah. Jamie? Um, as a lawyer, I would have objected to the survey question as a compound question, but the intersection is not a problem, period, do not spend money on it. I think really what you're hearing is do not spend money on it. Yeah. I, I think everybody can admit there is probably a problem with that intersection, but <coughs> do not spend money on it. 36.8% um, of people mm. seem to think there is a problem with it. Um, that's a significant amount of people. <laughs> it's pretty close to the people that said don't spend money on it. So, I mean, obviously this is an intersection that comes up every couple of years as a problem, and I think we'll have to address it. I agree with Michael that when Zeb and Amber do their work uh, on the Hill property, and I think they've already got their plans together, mm -hmm. um, that that's a good time to address some of these questions, um, because I think they're going to be building a multi-level building there. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see what happens with the old Cumberland Farms and the Dr. Dickinson's building. You know, there, there's a lot of activity going on right at that intersection, so it makes sense to do some, some long-term planning there when, when those properties have their plans in place. Um, if we, I, I would change that to a plurality instead of majority because it is not more than 50%. So it's the number one vote getter, but it's a plurality. So I would make that suggested change to say a plurality. Okay, so Jim, yes. Uh, is, is this language, um, does it provide us the ability to, to move if all this additional development starts to move the needle. In other words, it's so close. Do we keep this in a place where we can, mm -hmm. we can make it a priority? I won't be that person, but can it be made a priority? Because, I mean, let's face it, if that, of those three developments, if that happens, clearly there's going to be some off-street off or off-site improvements required in order to make it all happen. We're going to have TIF monies coming with new constructions mm -hmm. that could or could not be placed in some way mm -hmm. to improvement. So it seems like it's got a lot of fluid to it, and I just, I just want to make sure the language is my last vote. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to give you the ability to yeah. do something if you have to, but can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This was, this, other than the plurality mm. <laughs> majority, this was fairly carefully drafted. Let, let, me, let me parse it since you raised the question. <laughs> there, and, you know, therefore, the council will take no action to study options to improve the intersection, but will continue to review, in parents at no municipal cost, changes impacting traffic. So, you know, if there's changes at the intersection, the new buildings we just mentioned, those the council will continue to review those. You'll mm -hmm. look at those traffic studies. Uh, you know, they'll be paid for by someone else conceivably, but you you will look at them <coughs> at the intersection. The at municipal cost refers to the changes at no municipal cost, refer to changes impact traffic at the intersection. The and pedestrian issues in conjunction with reviewing pedestrian safety opportunities throughout the town center is not conditioned at no municipal cost because that's presuming after looking at the citizen roundtable points right. where a lot of people raised issues about pedestrian movements and safety that the town may at some point want to look at some pedestrian safety opportunities, not only at that intersection, but throughout the town center, and that might involve some municipal costs. So if you parse this thing out totally, okay. that would be the full interpretation of what's intended here. Good. Hey, Caitlin. Is this supposed to be read as a policy, like the Goddard Mansion was a policy or a motion like the last one we gave steps going forward? Because if it's a policy, then couldn't we simply insert at this time? Or, I mean, that makes it so that there's a whole lot of changes that could happen that make it so that all this can be readdressed because it's not, we're just doing this at this time. It seems to me that it says that already, but uh, you know, if, others might have a right because it, it doesn't say at this time, but it implies that right now we're going to take no action in reference to studying study options. But if there are changes impacting traffic, then 
we do something else. That, you know, and through you to Councilor Jordan, I think the real message in this is, you know, this could have, if the second option had been chosen by the citizens, the town should open an extensive public dialogue and options for the intersection. You would have had a proposal before you this evening that got that in motion. You know, instead, you know, the recommendation is you follow what the 48.2% said. Uh, does that help? <clears throat> sure. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to agree. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, one other comment I'd have would be that during the course of the Town Center Planning Committee uh, proceedings, we did talk about communication with the MDOT, and Maureen was going to follow up with them uh, to talk about changing the speed limit in right. that yeah. area. So that's another thing. Still on. Patty was working on that one. Yeah, it's, still, it's all pending. So we did. We went through the initial things, brought it to the, the council. It's off it sitting in M MDOT just waiting. Right. Yeah. Mm. Among many other Our things, response. I'm sure. Right. Right. You know, I, let, let, me, let me speak to the department heads who, who had the last contact with MDOT. Sometimes with the state, what we would then do is would speak to the state senator or state rep, and sometimes they get faster response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, traditionally that would be the case. I, things in Augusta are a little bit different than they sometimes been, so uh, we'll see. Anything else? Um, okay. There, and there's a motion on the table. Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Great. Then we will move on to item 135. And... Um, before we start that, I'd just like to thank the Appointments Committee for the work that they did and for the uh, 46 citizens that showed up to that roundtable. So having said that, I think I'm turning it over to Patty, am I? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Patty's looking around hoping that it's projecting on the wall. Right, it's just about to project. Yeah, Here it comes. It's, it's there, yeah. It's, it's warming up. Okay. Warming That's up. just for people who can, um, I guess if anybody's at home watching this or in the future when it's taped. Um, Hopefully they'll be able to see that. Okay, great. Um, so tonight, I was asked to provide an overview of the 2015 Citizens Roundtable. Um, the, this roundtable that was hosted by three counselors, Jim Walsh, Kathy Ray, and Molly McCausland, was an effort organized so the council could hear directly from Cape citizens to hear what they like and don't like about the town's current and future direction. This presentation will hopefully do two things. Um, first, highlight comments and themes we heard at the roundtable, and second, to create a list of strategic goals and object objectives for the council to consider at its goal-setting workshop. Um, however, it's important to note that this is only one step of a five-step process to determine council goals for 2016. We'll also consider input from the tax bill, tax bill survey results, input from the town's committees and boards, ideas from incoming and outgoing councillors, and last step will be to prioritize all this input and solidify our goals for next year. So general comments, background on the roundtable itself. Um, there was a good turnout. There was about 50 people, 49 exactly, who attended. There was a diverse demographic with a wide representation of opinions and suggestions. Um, the major overriding theme that I heard from um, this is that we heard that the council can do a better job of communicating. Um, this is one of the reasons we are actively bringing forth the feedback we heard from the Cape Citizens uh, tonight. So from all this discussion emerged 16 common categories. I'm going to go through each of the categories briefly and give you the kind of the gist of what was said. Um, but the full overview can be found on the town website. So the first category, budget. We heard that the council should do more long-range planning. Um, you'll hear later about the capital improvement plan and how that plays into long-range planning. The second category, cell towers and service. We heard just do it. Um, I think it's safe to say that our community wants and deserves reliable cell service. Category three, committees. We were urged to create better use of committees, better clarification of responsibilities, more diverse re representation on town council, and more balanced committees. Number four, communication. A few ideas we heard um, is that public comments should be heard the month before a council vote, that we should record town council workshops on Cape TV, use social media for input, 
do a better job of repre to represent interests of all citizens. The tax survey was a great tool and to establish more accountability and communication of goals. As for communication, clearly, you know, we can always do a better job of communicating with the public and should consider updating our communication strategy. However, we do have some mechanisms in place. And as we heard earlier that Jim, you are largely responsible for that and deserve some accolades here. Um, but our town website has lots of information. There's an RSS feed available. Public comment is available at the beginning and end of every meeting and also at the start of any agenda item. Cape TV carries meetings live and replays meetings throughout the month. And there's also video of regular meetings is always available on the town website. Category five, community service services. The major comment was do a pool study. Six, comprehensive plan. The feeling was that it might be time to update the comprehensive plan. Next year, the comp plan will be 10 years old. And also consider updating the 2005 Credit Call Insights study. Number seven, development. Comment themes were focus on bottom up versus top down development ideas. We need affordable housing in town balance development with green space in our town center and keep multi-unit development in town center and on main roads. Um, clearly the issue of development is a hot one in our town and updating the comp plan will hopefully do two things. Allow for lots of citizen participation and input and seek to balance private property rights with town's development objectives. Number eight category was Fort Williams. We heard that pickleball wants its own courts. Obviously tonight we um, began that process and have some resolution moving forward. Look at creating a community amphitheater with for-profit and not-for-profit options. We got mixed reviews on demolishing or keeping Goddard Mansion. Tonight we affirmed that we were going to continue to stabilize that. Um, as for Fort Williams, the Fort Williams Master Plan established in 2003 and was updated <coughs> in 2011 and perhaps it might be time to revisit and update that plan. Number nine, infrastructure. Lots of feedback here. Um, asked to address facility needs in a fiscally responsible manner. Uh, reviews 77 Shore Road intersection. Um, tonight we uh, continue to agree that we'll, as town <coughs> development continues, uh, that we'll continue to review that. Look at sewer connections at Kettle Cove and Crescent Beach. Publicize capital improvement plans and priorities. As for infrastructure, um, here's some info the public might like to know. Um, we have a new updated capital improvement plan for 2017 through 26. It's available on the town website. This plan provides 10-year cost projections for all infrastructure improvements. Of note, all projects or capital expenditures are approved by town council and all projects with projected costs of a million or more must go to town um, vote for approval. Category 10, open space. Themes here were to preserve land, to collaborate with CELT, and to implement, implement recommendations from the Open Space Committee uh, report. Public safety, issues and concerns centered around security at parks, speed on the roads, and bike and runner safety on the roads. Uh, we did share these issues with the police, and they held a meeting in October, and um, these address, they plan on um, addressing these concerns. Category 12, renewable energy. It was suggested to strongly investigate renewable energy options, establish a committee, and explore making town buildings more green and energy efficient. 13, school, school board. Emerging themes were council should work more closely with school board to assess budgets, want town council to fully fund schools, and want town council to recognize schools as a stated priority. 14, staffing. We were asked to consider more shared positions in town, specifically to share the town planner with another community, as we do now do with the town assessor. 15, town center. Themes we heard were concerns with town center plan, development, and process for input, safety intersections near Cumbies and at Top of Shore Road, and a need for a light there, need for lower speed limit in town, and a desire to keep the town center rule. 16, last category, transportation, major theme, uh, people like the walking paths. People want more road paths, um, Lakeshore Road, especially on Mitchell and Fowler. And as well, we heard that people want public transportation to South Portland. So um, basically what we did is we took all this information and we distilled 
this feedback from the Citizens Roundtable and came up with 11 recommended goals. Um, I guess it's important to remember again that this is only one piece of a multi-prong <coughs> approach to establishing the goals. Um, so with that, the Appointments Committee recommends the following goals for consideration at the Council's December workshop. And I guess consideration is the key word. Um, the first is address cell tower service. Two, separate public hearings from dates votes taken. Three, look into cost and availability of resources for video recording of every meeting. Review the communication strategy. Communicate schedule for revisiting, updating the comprehensive plan. Consider community services reporting, should it report to the town manager or to continue to the superintendent. Revisit the open space report recommendations. Explore renewable energy options and look for update on facility efforts to be more green and energy efficient. Determine future of Goddard Mansion. We did that tonight. It's going to be stabilized. And can also consider updating the Fort Williams Advisory Commission's master plan. Look into possibility of sharing town planner with another community. And finally, explore expanding past walkways in town. So, I guess we, there's a motion, not a really motion, but asked that we accept this report and uh, move it to um, the December workshop, um, goal setting workshop. Is there a second for the exception? Uh, is it to accept it or to receive it? Well, and that's we, my question. I think we, uh, uh, there's a big difference. Okay, it's to receive it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there a second to receive it? Jessica. I uh, second. Thank you. Discussion. Molly. I'd just like to say I thought we had a terrific evening in September. The three members of the Appointments Committee have spent a lot of time working with how to present all of the information and the feedback that we had. I also have heard from, uh, I can't tell you how many people, 20 people, 25 people in the last month or month and a half that it's been that that was a great opportunity for people of all sorts of um, different mindsets to come and share their ideas and insights with each other and get that information back to the council. I've heard from at least a dozen people saying, please make it a regular event. So I'll just throw that out there. I'm not going to say we'll commit to that right now, but I think it was enthu enthusiastically received by the community. So I'd like to see us do it again. Thank you. Other quick comments? Jim. Uh, well, certainly in this election cycle, we did hear a lot of feedback about this event, and people were pleased with it, and ho hopefully next year build on it. But it is just one more slice of information that you as the new sitting council are going to have to consider. I mean, granted, there was only, you know, 49 people in the room, and granted, they, they, were, they came with their, in some cases, their folks came with specific things they were addressing, and they were going to drive that home whether whether it was that meeting or any other meeting so so I you know I just think it's it's great information as you guys go into your December meeting frankly um, and pleased that we we're able to put it together I know it wasn't quite what we had originally thought we wanted to do but we recognized time is of the essence and this was the best uh, resource utilization at the time so thank you Jim. <clears throat> other, other comments um, I, I think I'd, I'd echo what Jim said. It's, it's a piece of information, um, and um, it's something to be considered when we're looking at all the information that we get. Um, um, and uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I mean, when I looked through the report, and you did a wonderful job. It, it's it's interesting because you know I think we all know as town councilors that we get conflicting information all the time. You know, I want A, I want Z. And then we're trying to balance, okay. And sometimes the people who want A are very passionate that it's A or it's nothing. And sometimes the people that are Z, it's Z or it's nothing. And I think as town councilors, we oftentimes have to realize that we have to compromise and find something in the middle. Um, the report itself has contradictory information in it. So, um, which is, is very typical of what we get when we get a group of people. Um, you know, I, I think about uh, some of the bigger issues that we dealt with this year sure. and that we had people that were all over the place and then we as a council had to say, okay, how do we make a decision? How do we do something? And I think the, the Rod and Gun Club is a perfect example of trying to run things down the middle and some people were happy with some of it, some people weren't, and, but nobody was completely happy 
And, and I think that's because we did our job. Um, so I think this is good information and, you know, as Molly said, we should do some more of these um, and, you know, get some more information. And then as a council, I think, and as individual counselors, you take the information and you use that um, when you come to make your decision. Because as a counselor, you make a decision and we're not here to be head counters. We're not here to say, well, 12 people want this and six people want that, so we're doing the 12. It's not our job. We don't need that. I mean, we don't need to be, have a council if that's going to be, we're going to be head counters. So, um, but anyway, thank you. I appreciate it and I appreciate all the work and I don't know how you do the overhead because, boo, I couldn't do that. Um, yes, Jim. Kathy, through the, uh, just for the record, maybe Molly could share. We did a deep dive on what worked well and what didn't work well mm -hmm. in the report out by... You mean on, on the actual on, meeting on the actual itself? meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think that maybe Molly wants to carry the ball on this, but we, we made some interesting observations about the practices that were employed during the readout. Mm -hmm. And that what you got today was more information than you would necessarily receive had we done a better job in the readout. What we would have done is charged the readout with prioritizing mm -hmm. the top two or three. Mm -hmm. Okay? Stack and rank. then we would have asked the 49 people to circulate for five or ten minutes and do your prioritization mark, you know, what you thought. But, I mean, so like when you put the stickers on and it's get exactly, the most yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, because again, if you, if you go forward the next time, one of the ways to really, you know, sort of synthesize this down to something that's even more valid than the current, would, which is really a list, yeah. would, have, would have been to do something like that. Again, long and short of it is, look, hey, it's all, it's all more information to make better decisions about your goals going forward. Well, and, and you know, so. obviously this was the first blush, so I mean, I think you did a great job hmm. considering it was the first first one of these kind, you I know, say, it was, it, by the time you're finished, you'll have it down to a science, you know, <coughs> we need three hot dogs and, you know, three sure. sodas and, you know, whatever, so. Yeah. So. Uh, and I didn't mean to sound like I was preaching. I was saying how I use this information. <coughs> so I didn't mean to sound like yeah. I was preaching to the council. Yeah. You all make your own decisions. Molly. Kathy, I'll just follow up on what Jim said. I think the appointments <coughs> committee has in our meeting minutes from last month. Um, four specific recommendations on how to move forward next year, and I think we will just forward those to the council at some point in the future so that if and when the council decides to do this next, whatever, August or September, that those items could get factored into the decision-making process. Um, in terms of the comments that you've made, I, I do want to be really clear. I think Patty said this right up front. This is one of, I think she said five, prongs, five opportunities for the council to hear and think about the process for determining goals for the next year. So I want to be very clear from, as chair of the appointments committee, it's not that we are recommending 16 goals. I think it is that we are trying to present fairly what we heard, which of course does include contradictory results and comments and reports back because we have 9,000 people in town who have 9,000 different opinions about all sorts of issues. So, but I do want to be very clear that I think this is very valuable input and I do think you're correct. We have a responsibility to make our own decisions, but we also have some responsibility to be responsive to what it is that we're hearing from the community. And our job, as you say, is to balance that. And I, I think we have that obligation. Well, one of the things that I noticed at the, at the meeting, which I thought about at the end, is there were some um, questions or concerns or whatever that I think we could have answered pretty quickly. So um, is there, um, at another meeting, should there be a, an opportunity for, say, whoever the counselors are or whoever we think should be there? Like, for instance, at the time, the cell tower service, you know, that we need it mm -hmm. now. Well, the answer to that at the time was, we're in litigation right now, so we're not doing anything until that is decided. And that could have been, yep. instead of the question being out there and sort of people going, well, what are they doing with this? You know, we could have, some of those things we could have answered right away. And I thought, oh, maybe we should have had, it, it was just, it was a round table 
but it didn't go all the way around. <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. it, was, it was yeah. citizen I input, agree. but we, we didn't, yeah. for the, the things that we could have answered. Well, the other one was the town chatter. I mean, the, right. the complete right. misunderstanding of the roles and responsibilities of the school board <laughs> and the town council yes. and the state law mm -hmm. and the right. chatter. Right. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It was but, just, by table, it right. was probably the biggest lack of understanding. I, if I could, Kathy, I'd just like to respond to that, Jim. I think it's incumbent upon us to understand that and for the school board members sure. to understand that, but I don't think it's reasonable to expect citizens who are coming to that meeting to understand that there maybe even is a town charter, and if they do know yeah. that, that, that it's probably unrealistic to expect most people who are coming to know that that exists or to know what the details are in it. So I, I want to be really careful about how we move forward with that information. And I do want to be very respectful of the citizens who took the time to come give us their input, even if we already have addressed several of their issues. It, it comes back to communication every single time. Mm -hmm. It does. We have a job to do. We have a job to do here, but we have a job to do to communicate what we're doing here to the public. And, and if that means we have to communicate the same thing once or twice or ten times, that's part of the job. It just is. Um, and I, you know, I hear what you're saying, Molly, and I hear what Jim's saying, and I think you're really actually supporting what he just said, which is there were people that felt that the, the school board and the town council should be acting in different ways and no, they don't necessarily know what the town charter is, but it's our job to communicate that with them. Right. And, I, and I agree with you, Jim, because you know people can get pretty um, <coughs> concerned about different issues. And if we have an answer, you know, if it's a factual answer, not an opinion, we always have lots of opinions, but if it's a factual answer, then I think it should be shared. Um, now, you know, I would think most people, when you share a factual answer, will say, oh, okay, I didn't know that, but thank you for that, and I can move on. Um, um, but that, that was another scenario that I took out of that, too, is that there were some real um, misunderstandings about the roles and responsibilities of school board members and town councilors with reference to the budget. Mm. And um, I know... At the very least, when we start into the next budget season, I, as one counselor, am going to make sure that I'm very clear to whomever asks, mm. or when we're on TV, as to what our roles and responsibilities are. <clears throat> People can disagree that they don't like those roles mm -hmm. and responsibilities, but that's in fact what they are at this time. So, well, go to go to one of the suggestions. <laughs> Caitlin, you, Caitlin has been a champion of us. <laughs> having a hearing and then taking it all in and sort of giving it another, shall we say another reading, like sometimes do a you know, first reading, second reading mm. before they vote. And that came out in this, and, you, and, 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 that's, and it just supports what Caitlin has been saying. And to some degree, if you look at what the end game is, so we wait a, another month, which is actually what we did with the gun club, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. More people understand that issue after that month, mm -hmm. and then when the decision's actually made, there's more understanding in the community. You don't necessarily get more, more people saying it was the right decision or the wrong decision. They're just informed. So to some degree, there's a simple piece that came out of this meeting that really could be easily actioned by the next council if you wanted to make it one of your standards. But I know that Caitlin had you, I mean, it's only five years I've been asking for it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but, but, you know, but, it, but again, when you think about it, um, it, it's, it makes perfect sense. And we were doing it for a while because you, you, were, you were causing that to happen um, after. Well, you were. I mean, you, no, it, no, wasn't, I it wasn't. It wasn't. Funny a, the way he said no, it. I, yeah. I'm not saying. Well, okay, that's, a, that's a, the, the wrong word. But you were having, you were getting it done on occasion, but we weren't doing it all the time. And to do it as a practical matter going forward, it certainly, I mean, it seems like a, a really a sleeve off a vest, extremely simple. Yet when you look at the outcome, what are we trying to accomplish? More understanding in the community about the business that we're doing for them as their elected officials. 
It's all, it's all for the right reason. But here it is, it came out of this meeting and it was, uh, and you weren't even, oh, anyway. I was there, <laughs> I shouldn't say it. So, um, well, it, I know we could probably talk about this all night, but we do have a motion on the table um, to um, receive the report. Um, unless anybody else has anything to say about it, should we um, take a vote? Yes, all in favor? Thank you. Um, item 136, Appointments Committee Report on Timeline for Goal Setting for Councils and Boards. Okay, that's back to me. Um, so Appointments Committee, we set up a timeline that um, establishes, I guess if you look at this, a, a top-down and a bottom-up approach to training and goal setting. Um, uh, training here is laid out uh, throughout the year would it be to deal specifically with um, meeting norms, minute taking, um, FOIA, all the different things would be kind of a top-down approach which would come from um, the town government and make its way down to committees and boards and then committee members. Um, Goal setting would then be a bottom-up approach, which is in the same timeline, which would start with things out the citizens' roundtable, goals, getting goals from boards themselves, um, and what they, and then reporting those up to the council, and then eventually being part of our goal setting process. And so that's basically the um, the gist of this document, and just being intentional about how we're doing those two processes. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. um, is there questions? Um, by counselors about this, Michael. Yeah, I, if I might, I had a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, you know, is this intended to be? You know, are you approving? Is the intent to approve this as a direction for staff to work with the council to see that all implemented? Is is that the intent? I have no idea. Where did this come? Um, the appointments um, can I respond uh, yeah, to that? Uh, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. I think what we're trying to accomplish is twofold. Number one, if you look at, I think it's November, where we mention the town holds training for department heads and staff liaisons to boards on roles, responsibilities, and expectations. And I think in our discussions, we talked about that being specifically this year as we were looking to address goal setting and training for boards and commissions this year. And if we implement this plan that your staff wouldn't need future training in that regard because this would be the process and so starting um, at this point in November and in future years we would start in September that the appointments committee recommendation is that the council ac accept this as a plan moving forward for getting that information back and forth in the goal setting process. Again, this is one of our five prongs for how the, the council can work on goal setting, that we get information from the boards and commissions on what they've accomplished for the past year and what they're interested in doing in the future. And we also take that input and give them feedback a little bit later on in the process about what our goals and uh, expectations are for the upcoming year. So as Patty explained it, we're looking at both a top-down and a bottom-up process, and we're looking for another feedback loop for interaction between boards and commissions and the council. Okay, that was, uh, I think I understand. Uh, so, secondly, uh, so to answer your question though, in terms yeah. of your staff, yeah. specifically if you look at November that the town holds training for department heads and staff liaisons to boards on roles, responsibilities, yep. and expectations. And the discussion that we had was that that would be specific in this year because we're talking about implementing something that yep. is a new, a new process. So you'd like to see that happen this month? Well, we would if the council agrees with this yeah, process okay. for engaging with boards and commissions. And I, I will say I'm also sensitive on on the appointments committee, I think we're all sensitive to the fact that the um, ordinance committee is looking at boards and commission responsibilities in the upcoming yeah. year. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to make sure, my reason for this mm -hmm. line of questioning, and mm -hmm. I have several, is I want to make sure I'm, I'm responsive to, to, to what the council wants if, mm -hmm. if this is approved. Yep. Secondly, you know, the whole issue of, you know, in October, boards draft goals for the next fiscal year, 
November town boards submit draft goals and input. Some years, you know, we've done that in January when the new folks are seated, mm -hmm. when, the, you know, people think, you know, just as the council sitting in December, we do the process once we know who the new council is going to be after the election. Uh, you know, what you're actually asking boards to do is develop goals when half of them may not be on the, the committee the next year. Can I respond to that? Yeah. I, I think what you see in this timeline is only points of discussion or opportunities along a pathway of a six month period for give and take so that we get boards and commissions thinking about what it is that they have accomplished in the past year. And I think my first year on the council, we had, I think Jessica was the chair, we did the training for boards and commission members and we asked chairs of each board and commission to give us their input on their goals so, for the year. And I think that was a little later in the process. I think yes, that so was in January. But that was separate. Let me be more precise. If the council approves this this evening, are we, are we supposed to ask the boards and commissions to draft goals and to submit things for goal setting process? Because if we ask them tomorrow, and your goal setting is mostly happening in your workshop on December 1, most of the boards have already scheduled other things for this month, yeah, or, or they don't have meetings this right. Thanksgiving. Their meetings will have gone by. So I, I'm, I'm really, you know, it, it strikes me, if you want them to do goal setting, and this is the schedule you want, you know, I need a little more instruction for what was what we're to do this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, was, yeah. I think the expectation that you have here, you know, October is already history. Right. And, and yet, I think yeah. it's too bad not to have goals 2016 from the boards and commissions. I agree. Caitlin. Oh, and I, I still have yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you, go no, ahead. You go ahead and then. I thought yeah. you the other piece that, that's missing here yeah. is the orientation of the town council. And, and I think that is extremely important. And if you were to approve something like this, that that ought to be incorporated into this. Okay, in December or November? Uh, in November, I, you know, because I think the council needs orientation earlier rather than later, so that it, it's ready to roll with its goal setting and everything else that it needs to do. It, you know, I think it knows the right to know are and all those things. Okay, so add in November an orientation for town council. Good, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was it. You're Thank good you. for now. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think this is a great idea and a, a great first step. I'd like to suggest maybe that we request the boards and commissions to give us some goals, ideas, and that's what we do for this year. And we take this to a workshop to the full council and start. I, I think the appointments committee did a great job starting it, but I think the whole council might need to work on the timeline because a lot of questions have come up, a lot of things that relate to staff. but not missing out on the 2016 goal setting, a simple request to boards and commissions tomorrow, submit a couple goals that you guys want to be working on so that we have an idea of what you guys are thinking to take to our next meeting, and then we clean this up for 2017, or the end of 2016, going into 2017. Yes, okay. Yeah, I was gonna just suggest that we go to workshop on this, I think there you know, I've got a lot of questions, and I think it deserves a lot more input, some interesting ideas, but I'd like to wait and go to workshop, and I'm not sure I agree with Caitlin's recommendation, because I would like to just have a much more clear direction about this before we approach any of the boards and commissions on it. I think we need to have our ducks lined up first. Molly. I actually like the idea of going to workshop. I think our expectation was that we actually were going to originally go to workshop with this, and then we ended up missing because we had a September meeting, and then we thought we'd be on October workshop, and then we had a meeting in October, and it made it onto the agenda for November for a regular meeting. We're not opposed, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I don't think we're opposed to doing anything at a workshop, but I do think it's really helpful to ask for input before we do our goal setting at the council level. Again, mm -hmm. one of those five prongs, I think it's really helpful to get the input from board and committee chairs to see what they have going on and what they'd like to see us doing here. 
Yes. So, so if I might, so the instruction mm -hmm. is to, you're, you're telling me to get a letter out tomorrow to the board and commission chairs saying the council's having goal setting December 1. If they have any particular suggestions for goals, they should submit them, yeah. even though they may not have a chance to consult. You know, I don't want to tell them to consult with the committee by email because right. that, yes. we've right. gone understand. through that. We're yes. not doing that. Yes. Uh, and a lot of them don't have meetings. In November? Uh, Between uh, now and then? Yeah, a lot of them don't. Or they've already had them. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you can make an attempt for this year, and certainly in the future, we get yeah. to workshop, right. clean it up. But it, I mean, it, yeah. I don't think there's any harm in reaching out and asking without a really clean process. I think that w what you suggest, Mike, is not you know, a bad idea. Just, if I might suggest something else, what if we just did an old-fashioned letter, we, we could do mail merge to every board and commission member, and ask every member, put, put a little sheet in, please suggest any goals. That way, because we don't generally treat the chairs as having any special mm -hmm. extra standing for goals. Right. And so, what if we just sent them a letter, to everyone, and maybe even put a postage stamp on, so someone complained we don't do that, <laughs> that they could respond <laughs> uh, with any suggestions. Sure. I like that idea. I like the idea of reaching out Snail to people mail. and asking them. Snail mail. Yes. That's what we do mm -hmm. in tax bills, right? Yep. Yeah, but no snail. Oh, no we stamp. Did. Oh, was that you guys criticized? We got a complaint on that, yeah. We didn't give a return Did they stamp. put the, in with the tax bill? No, that was the, the intent, but... Right. They wanted know, a separate I, envelope? Never mind. You, you Never. Know, <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. Jim. You sorry you asked me? No, I'm no. sorry I asked that question. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> what? Only got another 15 minutes here. You can do what you want. But could you explain the five-prong thing again? The five prongs of this? Sure. Well, the five prong was just through this, um, the process that we would um, receive input. Um, and this is not a, anything that we've certainly agreed on as a council, but it was my understanding prior to that as we were looking at the input from this round table that we knew before us were um, not only the round table discussion, but also this year we did a tax bill. Um, survey. Right? So that's that's number two. We had input. Um, we'd like to get input from town committees and boards and their people now through mail merge. Four would be um, ideas from in our December meeting from the incoming and outgoing councilors. Um, and then the last thing was to put this all into a hopper, sift through it, and then prioritize it. That's five. And so that you would then solidify your goals for the coming year, and the council would vote on them. Very clear. Thank you. I just I guess I just sort of missed. Well, it was well, at the I, very, I, be well, was at the very beginning ask. of Patty's <laughs> presentation. But the problem was that, that be set independently with five prongs, the right, way she right. just described it, is a lot clearer without any other, you know. Stuff going down. Yeah. Um, and again, that's all just a suggestion. As I went through this, I felt like we needed to know that, again, this was all um, things that we're going to consider. These are all things that are coming forth and, um, you know, from this bottom up approach um, that might people f make people feel like they're, it's more inclusive and responsive um, in the communication process. So I, I just, I think it's important though that the council make decisions about how they want to proceed. I mean, I think this is great information. Oh, absolutely. But I'm sort of sitting here going, huh? <laughs> and I, it's not because I, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not being rude. I'm just thinking. I'm not. I'm not catching. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Well, I think the council absolutely makes um, right. But I, I guess I was missing why we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was missing, and I know that the council probably told you to do something, and then I'm saying, well, what did we tell them to do? And now, so I, I was. I'm not being rude. I'm just sort of I, saying. I'm only reporting what came out. So the, from the, I, I was asked just to report what mm -hmm. came out. So I, where I think we're making an intentional effort to say that people were heard, because what we're hearing is that people are saying that we're not being heard. Certainly, it's the council's decisions, you know, to make. So. I mean, I think that was I, the only intention of the well, And it's funny because when Jim said, what's the five prong, I'm thinking, oh, good, I'm glad somebody asked because I wasn't sure what the five prong was. Uh, and I thought I was supposed to know. So <laughs> anyway, thank you. I, I, I apologize for sounding so Oh, no, no, I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're asking. And, dingy. <laughs> yeah, and I think that this, again, is just um, a, a way of uh, just a, a process of putting input into the hopper for our goals in December. 
Okay. So if I could just respond no. to that, one of yeah. our, if we look back at the Cape Elizabeth Town Council draft goals for 2015 that we reviewed earlier this evening, citizen engagement, we had the Town Council will continue to review additional opportunities for citizen engagement. We had the public forum held on September 17th. And then we also had another bulleted item here. The Town Council will develop a more formal mechanism for citizens to contribute to the annual goal setting for the community. So that's the goal that we're trying to respond to here. And I like the idea of going to workshop because I understand we're sitting in a regular meeting tonight, sort of going arm back. wrestling and works, a lot of right, detail that we right. don't usually do at a regular meeting. Yeah, yeah or a workshop. I, I, I think it's more appropriate yeah, to be at a workshop. Yeah. As I said, we sort of bumped along from September to October, and now we're in November, and we made it onto the agenda tonight, probably more appropriately at an agenda for a workshop. I, yes, Michael. Just quickly, an observation, something to think about for your workshop. I, I, I think annual training and goal setting are two separate things. I, I, and, you know, I would, as, as this gets evolved into a future draft, you know, I'd be happy to, to work with uh, whoever it is uh, to try to separate this into two, documents. two, two different documents that, okay. that look at each. Okay, so... Um, I, I agree, and in fact, if I could again ahead. respond to that, I think in our October 20th discussions, we have a separate um, recommendation on a packet for the implementation for, specifically for boards and commissions, and we actually, uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we have talked about council or council members orientations specifically we were talking really trying to respond to some issues at the board and commission levels or committee levels to make sure that people were getting the training that they needed at that level so we've we've done a little work on separating those two just on that note if i might i am meeting tomorrow with the chair of the appointments committee specifically to 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 since they've been working on orientation issues and training issues I'm meeting with the chair of the appointments committee to talk about the council orientation on November 18th, and a lot of you may be hearing subsequent to that meeting that you you might be participating and helping to contribute to providing that orientation. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> um, a motion. So stay tuned. Thank you, Caitlin. Well, I'm just wondering if you would like a motion to move this. Well, I'm trying to figure out what we do with this item. So that's why I was asking if you'd like a motion. I'll to workshop. Well, a motion to have the letter go out to all the members of the boards and commissions looking for a suggestion box return for our goal setting and to move the timeline for what we're reviewing now to a workshop. Do, do you need that? Mike, or can just, that's what the council wants at time. Because I was thinking he could just do what he could do, but it doesn't matter. So is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Thank you, Jim. Any more discussion? Yeah. I, it just on that point, yes. I think it helps to me when this letter goes to the council, to the council ask. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, any, anything uh, else? I'll, Oh, Jim, yes. just, just one comment before we move to, if we're going to, you know, we, the, this year has been an interesting one with the committee that I've been involved with. And a lot of it is about, around clarity of goals and objectives and purposes of not only that board, but also this board. And the lack of that understanding leads us to trying to be more clear about it and have a roadmap laid out. And this is an attempt to try to get, and I applaud Molly's uh, work to try to get a little clarity about it in terms of where we're headed, but it does require more work from a workshop standpoint. But I, you know, I applaud the effort because, you know, I think it's, it's only going to lead to everybody moving in the right direction and understanding what their roles and responsibilities are. Well, as Jimmy, as you always say, it's like herding cats, right? Well, it can be. <laughs> and I, I know you want to move on, but you know, I think we're doing 90% of this anyway, but yeah. it goes back to Caitlin's question earlier in the evening. Is this a policy? Where is it written? Where can I see it? And we're doing most of this, right. except it hasn't been committed to writing right. and saying, sure. the council formally saying, this is what we want. Yeah. And it changes from year to year, right? Hmm? It, we do most of it, but sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It changes from well, year to year. Yeah, the council do, sometimes they want to do these citizen roundtables. Yeah. Sometimes the council oh, you know, let's not do that this right. year. Yeah. Okay, so are we ready to vote?
Oh, did you want to say something else? Right? I don't want to say anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, all in favor? Okay. And then uh, item 137, um, appointments <clears throat> committee report on letter to be utilized in your orientation. Um, Molly, is it you? Patty? It is me. I'll give you a little bit of background. We were asked at the September 9th workshop to review and make recommendations to update the 1978 Adams letter. Um, I'm looking at appointments committee uh, meeting minutes and meeting notice. This letter is just one resource to aid in the town's effort to better educate board members on their responsibilities, expectations of uh, board members, rules, policies, laws, freedom of access, etc. So we took a look at this uh, Adam's letter in our September meeting. We did a quick draft and a revision in September. We sat down and reviewed it again in October. We have a draft for the council to look at tonight and hopefully approve tonight um, so that we can use that as the welcoming letter for new board and commission members coming in for the upcoming year. Thank you, Molly. Thanks. Is there a motion? I yeah. move we accept the recommendation and the letter that's contained in our packets this evening. Thank you. Is there a second? second. Jamie, thank you. Discussion? Jessica? Has the town attorney reviewed this? It's a good question, and I don't believe so. Hmm? Has the town attorney reviewed it, and does the town attorney need to review it? No, I, I, that was I don't my think question. specifically, no. Okay. Pardon? I don't think, you know, if you, if you want me to forward it to him, I will. It, you know, i looking at it, it looked to me like it was mirroring what we'd received in earlier correspondence, and right. my sense is that the Appointments Committee had looked at the earlier correspondence in coming up with this letter. Our goal was to really update the language a little bit, but leave the intent pretty much the same. But if the Council wants to go to the Attorney, we can do that. Jamie? Yeah, I mean, I, I read the, the, the letter and I thought it was good and I thought it reflected what the town attorney's advice was. I think we could save the expense. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we did, we added links to it, to it because we felt like they needed to see, they could go to the law itself if they needed to look at FOIA or whatever. Well, and I was going to ask about that. Um, is, there a, is there like a, a flyer that you could get that is really much you know much clearer in terms of i mean you can go to the law and you can read it but it's mm. you know sort of goes on and on and you know subsections subcategory blah 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 and i'm wondering if there's a mm. flyer that the state pro yes there, there's you know the mma puts out frequently asked questions but mm -hmm. there are many different <laughs> tools and resources uh on this particular law i was thinking of being able to give something you know in, in addition to the letter giving the folks that are on our um, committees, commissions, yeah. whatever, you know, a, a flyer that is, you know, I, I always like, you know, keep it simple. You know, no. something that's as simple as, well, you know, maybe it's not that simple, but um, it's not simple. But something that you could also, you know, here's your welcome letter and here's your yeah. whatever it is, the MMA production. Or you know, I, I think what, what will, you know, after the dust settles in three or four months hmm. and you come up with the board and commission responsibility to come up, I can see we ought to have a, a handbook for boards and commissions. Maybe you can print things relatively cheap these days, that, and, and you can have it electronic as well, that, that, that has this letter, that has some of the other types of things you're talking about, that explains the goal setting for boards and commissions, that, that tries to pull it all together in one place. Uh, you know, I, I think handing people a bunch of brochures uh, you know, it's good, but you know, they're gonna look at one of them and you know, I, I get more brochures and more functions, more meetings right. I go to and that's an excellent idea and yeah. you know it could be dated so that like with the town charter, you know, if we yeah. decide okay it's time to update the handbook. But it'd be really nice to have a little handbook. It would, and then they've got it all together and But but I, I do say, you know, maybe the council can suggest it as a goal, but I, I do think you've got a little more of, of consensus building before we do that over the next few months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions, comments? Uh, Jessica? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, 
I would be more comfortable with the town attorney um, reviewing it because it's it seems um, how do I put this um, a little more relaxed than what even what MMA produces. I mean, I think it's I think it's very good, but I certainly I'd be in favor of having it reviewed uh, by the town attorney before we formally present it. Okay. Caitlin? Well, I don't agree. I don't think we need to have the town attorney re review it. It's not a legal document. We're not providing any legal advice. We're just giving some words of welcome. And in case you didn't know, here's what you should probably know while you're on the boards and commissions. And it mirrors quite well, I thought, the from former aged letter. And I agree with Mike that I think this handbook idea is a better way to move forward and given how much we have spent on legal fees this past year, I don't see this being another 16 minutes of billing time. Okay. Jim, did you have your hand up? No, okay, I'm sorry. Anybody over here? No. Anything else? I mean, I already said that I agree with Caitlin. I don't think it's necessary to have a further legal review. Okay. So we, uh, well. I'll just say, I think our intent on the appointments committee was indeed to make this a very welcoming letter. And um, I think there are other ways to get across the information, particularly about FOIA responsibilities that include whether it's a brochure or write up from MMA or training or access to a website. Um, we. I think ought to be encouraging people to apply to serve on boards and commissions and make them feel welcome. And I think that's the intent behind the letter. I, I personally don't think there is a need to have the town attorney um, spend time or have the town spend money on it, but I won't oppose that if other members of the council feel strongly. I'm not getting that sense from the councilors who've weighed in. Yeah, I just want to point out that Three or four months ago, we asked the town attorney to update this letter. Yes. And something else was produced that the council didn't feel met the need. Yes. And this this was the council's way of dealing with the initial request not having coming back as you expected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just Do we have a motion? I didn't hear the. You, you put her, put your head down and turn that way, and I didn't hear the your last Sorry. sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ignore you guys this time. <laughs> yeah, this all started, uh, you know, three or four months ago, and we, we actually asked the town attorney to update the, the Adams letter, and he ended up producing something that 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 we didn't want. You know, was 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 very good, but it, it but didn't it's... meet the council's mm -hmm. expectation. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the council said, "We don't want to use what he came up with. Let's come up with our own." And the councils come up with their own, and you know I'm not sure we want to start that whole route again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Okay. All right. Um, nobody's in the audience, so there's no citizen opportunity for discussions. Um, and there's some future meetings um, on the bottom of your agenda, just so you know. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can let Mike know. Um, and I think we voted unanimously all night, did we not? Yeah. Right. Is this like the first time? The last meeting listed is actually in 2015, not in 2016. Oh, darn. Oh, I thought some, maybe some, we had some, a year off there for no, a second. Huh? Some people start, keep writing the old year. I start the new one too early. Very good. Okay. Mm. So is there um, a motion to adjourn? And before we do, Thank you again to Jamie and Jim for your service. And we will miss Thank you. you. Thank you. Can we make a joint, yeah. uh, joint, joint adjourn? Joint motion adjourn. to we adjourn. Both jointly <laughs> wish to adjourn this meeting. Okay. In our career. All in, uh, all in favor. Second as well. All in favor. All in, yeah. That's a first. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations.